to Minding Your Business, the show for entrepreneurs. And when I say entrepreneurs, they are really incredibly talented, different, and very motivational, and in time, certainly, um, a, a great gift for our show. Um, I'm your host, June Middleton, and this evening's show, a very talented entrepreneur is an artist, Anna Marie Trombetta. Anna Marie's biography is extremely impressive. She's listed in Who's Who in American art and has exhibited her work around the world and a recipient of several fellowships and grants. Um, she's been written about in many publications, which include the Fine Art Connoisseur magazine. I know that that was a very big pleasure and honor to have that happen. Anne Marie has studied here in the U.S., but she's also studied in Ireland and in France. It is just such an honor to have someone so talented on the show. She has created works in printmaking, watercolor, oil, and pastel, which she had a little problem using her pastels when she was in Brazil because of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted true. to have on the show Anna Marie Trombetta. Anna Marie, thank you. It's great to have you back. You were here about four years ago. Yes. And you've done so much. Thank you. Since that time period. Mm -hmm. First, we're going to look at some of your images. But before we do that, give us an update. What have you been doing? Um, you've had several exhibits? Yes, recently I had two exhibits. The first one was at the Union League Club, and it's, it's a nice coincidence because the Union League Club was founded in part by Frederick Law Olmsted. And the oh, show. Oh, Central Park. Yes, the show, the theme of it was based all on Central Park. Wonderful. So I thought, wow, this is an, a nice coincidence. Going in, I didn't know that, but then I did a little bit of research, and when I found that out, uh, and the space and location is was beautiful. It's right off Park Avenue. And the second uh, follow-up exhibition was at the Italian American Museum down on Mulberry Street in Little mm -hmm. Italy. So it, it felt wonderful to have an exhibition because during the summer, uh, through the National Academy School, they mm -hmm. had an opportunity to um, go to several locations in Italy, the first being Venice. Uh, the former director of the school, now he's the curator, Maurizio Pellegrin, mm -hmm. is a native of Venice. So we were able to see parts of Venice mm -hmm. that I had where, never seen where before. Where were you from? Originally uh, from Brooklyn. Ah. Yes, uh, my dad is uh, from Italy, and mm -hmm. my mom is of Italian descent, but mm -hmm. uh, American-born uh, um, in, in the city of New York. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> terrific, terrific, terrific. And I mean, I can understand why you're so drawn to Central Park. I've done a lot of work in helping to build pay playgrounds in ah, Central Park. Yes. And park, the Parks Council, mm -hmm. I was a member of for a long time. So, I mean, I can appreciate how inspirational it must be for you well, to uh, do a lot of work. Aside from it being beautiful, mm -hmm. guaranteed, uh, what was of interest to me was the fact that the idea for the park began with the Hudson River School painters. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, at long mm -hmm. ago, when I was uh, a student and part-time employee at the National Academy Museum, I found out this information, this fun fact. And aside from that, uh, it were, they told um, the now called Bryant Park, William Cullen Bryant, mm -hmm, who was mm -hmm, a poet mm -hmm, first, mm -hmm, writer, mm -hmm and worked for several years at the New York Evening Post. Yeah. Well, you don't have any work, though, that you've done in Bryant Park, do you? Not, Not yet. <laughs> OK, that's coming. Well, Not you know yet, what? possibly. What I'd like very much to do is let's look at some of your work. Sure. And as we look at it, you can just give us uh, a description or an inspiration that came to you to prompt you to do it, mm -hmm. because you have some very unusual shapes in doing your art. So let's just take a, a look at the first one. I believe it's what, Chinese Scholar's Garden? Yes, this first piece is actually, 
This is a compilation piece. What I like to do is uh, use the shape to, uh, to illustrate not just the philosophy, but also for this garden in particular, it, is, it comes with some other shapes. It's actually two hexagons. One is this one, and the other one is six separate mm -hmm. triangles, which form a star now, around it. Now, is that the, the, I think we have that one here, the yes. six. Um, yes. Uh, so there's, we can, there's, is that what this is? It's actually one image, but there's two versions of it so that the viewer can see that the triangles rotate around the centerpiece, which was the first image of the mm -hmm. waterfall. This is the first authentic Chinese scholar's garden in the country. There's another one in California, but this mm -hmm. is numero uno. It was um, brought here in 1999, so it's fairly recent. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the artisans from China came here to assemble it. Uh, in fact, it's from the Ming is this dynasty. On Staten it is on the uh, Snug Harbor uh, location, but mm -hmm. yes, indeed, in answer to your question, mm -hmm. Staten Island. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I thought that it was. <laughs> now, the next one, we have a Tibetan museum, I uh, believe. The next one up is at. actually, uh, this is the Chinese Scholar's Garden in etchings. Mm -hmm. uh, what I decided to do. Uh, what is an etching? Give us a definition, please. An etching please. basically is uh, a drawing on a metal plate, and you use acids, and you use certain chemicals, and you also use implements, sometimes I even use a needle, uh, to draw into the metal plate. Uh, and then now, you is have this to sometimes done with a heated, um, uh, is the metal ever, mm, they, or the, it, the, the it drawing instrument ever heated? Uh, sometimes to adhere uh, aquatint, uh, which is a, a technique or a way of working with rosin. Mm -hmm. um, it is necessary, it isn't, some, t some printers will uh, heat the plate before they print it, uh -huh. others will not. Uh, so Where did you learn this? Is uh, this I the began at Parsons. Uh, mm -hmm. I had uh, one of these uh, courses where it was six weeks of printmaking, six weeks of lithography, six weeks of silk screening, but I took the most to the printmaking because it's, it's more of a traditional medium, Rembrandt, mm -hmm. Uh, Degas, a lot of famous artists were consummate painters and also did yeah. printmaking. Now the next piece that we have that we can look at, mm -hmm. now is this, what is this again? These are six separate etchings and, and in this one you can see that you can also design it in either as, as a solo piece or as two pieces together. Mm -hmm. So the hexagon can not only be a hexagon, it could be a, a parallelogram, uh, you could have three plates printed. So there's a lot of uh, movement and diversity mm -hmm. within the uh, composition of the image. Now, I know that you do love Central Park. You do a lot of work there. Mm -hmm. Now, you have Cleopatra's Needles. In, it, it's coming up in, mm -hmm. a, in a few mm -hmm. images. Mm -hmm. And uh, if for the work that you have done, uh, though, what did you find? What do you find the most uh, interesting? What draws you most? Do you like to work? Uh, well, a lot of the images that I have done over the years, particularly the one we just saw, the Chinese Scholar's Garden, I mm -hmm. do love choosing cultural sites mm -hmm. or images that uh, relate to what's happening in the world today. For example, the uh, anagram brick, Brazil, Russia, India, yeah, I think we China. have something on that a little later on. You uh, work that you did in Brazil. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll. Uh, you can tell us about that when we get. But the, the to Chinese that one. Scholars Garden, uh -huh. pretty much it. China basically has exploded in the world yeah. market. So I chose that particular image to depict not only because it's beautiful, but mm -hmm. also because of uh, the importance of the country Okay, let's, let's advance time. now to uh, some of the work that you've done in Central Park. Mm -hmm. I think we have uh, Cleopatra's Needle. Well, this or piece this is, is... Now, this is uh, the Dalai Lama, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, actually on the, uh, the circular image is a painting I did uh, when I won a grant from the uh, Council of the Arts and Humanities on Staten Island. Mm -hmm. The Tibetan Museum is the only, only uh, Tibetan architectural structure outside of Tibet. And the, mm -hmm. the 
His now, Holiness was, was there in the early 1990s. What, what was the 1990s. occasion that you were able to meet the, uh, the Dalai Lama? Uh, that, several years later, I was at Snug Harbor working on that Chinese scholar's garden painting mm -hmm. and met a, a monk who was very friendly and very close to His Holiness. And in, in the course of time, we became friendly. He was taking some people to India, mm -hmm. and I had mentioned. And you were invited to go. Yes, okay. I had mentioned That's this wonderful. painting. That uh, is wonderful. Yeah, thank well, you. What is the last one in this? The last uh, one is a painting of. Um, a, it's a temple where the remain the relics of Buddha are mm -hmm. to be located. It's called Deer Park. Mm -hmm. It's in uh, an area called Sarnath, India. It's a very small painting, but I wanted to. Um, show that piece because when I was there I did do some painting mm -hmm. which even though it, the painting was done early in the morning my goodness it was as hot as hot gets. Ah, it really let's, see, let's, let's take a look at the, the next one that you mm -hmm. have here. This is this is a project that I did. This is the piano project yes, that you yes. did. It's uh, a piece uh, it's an organization called Sing for Hope and what they mm -hmm. do is they have all these different pianos donated, and they've asked artists to come up with something. This, now, this was is done around the city because they've had them in um, some that were uh, painted in front of Macy's. Yes, they in go. In Herald Square. Mm -hmm. They bring all the artists together. We uh -huh. work like little bees in a studio. This was done in 2011, and the subject matter is the 10th anniversary. It was, it was September now, 11th. Now, what was it that you uh, did on the piano? Yeah, there's three different views. The first was a quote from uh, the Song of Solomon. Mm -hmm. The middle is the end picture. It is of uh, the Twin Towers, the three circles, The First circle is of the um, the lights mm -hmm, during mm -hmm. the day. Now, how did they select scene. people to do this? Uh, well, they sent out applications. I through the uh, uh, Council of the Arts and Humanities on mm -hmm. Staten Island mm -hmm. saw the application. And the year before, I was in the park painting, and people were asking me, "Where's the piano?" And I said, "I don't know, but if you find it, tell That's me." That's very impressive. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. No, I was very happy to be a part to of that. that. That's wonderful. Well, let's take a look at the next one that you have, which is something totally different, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's um, here we ah, here we have Central Park. My now, this, favorite location in the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, right across from the Metropolitan Museum is this incredible obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle, but I have to give credit where credit is due. There are three different images. It's a mm -hmm. triptych, mm -hmm. and actually the pieces come together. They could either be seen as a flat painting, mm -hmm. or they can come together and be uh, an upright sculpture. Mm. I did three views because the person who reigned for 30 years but mm -hmm. Moses the third is the real uh, champion. I don't know how Cleopatra's needle came to be named for this well, obelisk. It's a lovely painting. It doesn't thank you. matter. Th <laughs> thank you very much. It's, it's a, a, it's a lovely nice, skull. It, yeah, monumental yeah, yeah. Abs monument. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's um, take a, a minute to talk about uh, the shapes that you have, because I see that your work seems to all be geometric shapes. Yes, that's How true. How did that come to be? How did well, you happen to want to do uh, shapes like that? Mm -hmm. One of the other schools that I went to called the New York Academy, it's primarily a school for figurative art. I also do portraits and, and mm -hmm. uh, people in interiors or people. <laughs> but uh, during the course of my years there, I did take a class called uh, Geometry and Perspective. Did you happen to like math when you were in school? I did, very much ah, so. Okay. Uh, not so much geometry, but the shapes. Mm -hmm. The shapes were extremely interesting to me. And had it not been for that class, I don't think it would have um, Influenced me as much. But I mean, the, you've the been shapes. greatly influenced because yeah, and now and everything I touch, work, right? Yeah. There's a geometric shape there. Mm -hmm. I do like rectangles. I am uh, sometimes a square peg, but in, in the same token, I do love my my circles, my ovals, my the the star, the Chinese scholar's garden. Mm -hmm. Actually, the um, the floor at the garden. 
is in hexagons and mm -hmm. triangles. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I try and come up with some kind of clever approach that is um, um, brings the message home. The mm. same thing with the obelisk. The shape of the canvas mm -hmm. is very long, mm -hmm. upright. Mm -hmm. So it echoes the yeah. what the subject matter. Now you have a work uh, I think that we have called Seasonal Arches. Yes. Is that also a geometric shape as uh, well? That, those I are, believe that uh, we have that as... Yes. Uh, this one piece is four pieces together. The idea behind it, you see each piece has an arch. So mm -hmm. to echo that sentiment, I, I designed all four of them uh, in the oval shape. They're all the same size. What I do want to point out is that each one of the ovals represents a different season mm -hmm. and a different location. The, the top one is the winter scene. That's on the north side. Mm -hmm. The one to the right, the, the pink one, is in scope arch, designed by Calvert Fox, that represents spring. The bottom is white. Mm -hmm. Winterdale is the name mm -hmm. of it because mm -hmm. it, it had a lot of pine mm -hmm. trees around it. But I thought summer white was appropriate for yeah. it. And the, the last, last but not one? least is uh, Grey Whack Arch, which is right in back of the Met. And it's done in a Spanish medieval two-tone green like an and autumn? for autumn, correct. Wonderful. So that's on the east side. So we have uh, mm -hmm. north, south, east, and west, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. kind of tough yeah. to do, actually. Now you have, that's really fascinating that you were able to do that. Thank you. And what you have also, too, is something called trefoil or trefoil? Trefoil, uh, trefoil arch. And what is uh, that? Oh, there mm -hmm. we have it. This is a drawing. Uh, there's also a pastel of this same arch. Uh, trefoil, it was named because the designs uh, on each side, in the center of it, there's a three-petaled fla flower. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a Gothic design. I think it was uh, by uh, Jacob Rye Mould, mm -hmm. English designer. Uh, but there's just something about it for me when I see it. it it's timeless. It's a very mm -hmm. classic image. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this one needs, it needs to be drawn. It really does. The image will tell me mm -hmm. what shape mm -hmm. and what medium. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, speaking, you have to listen to and, it. And speaking of medium, now you work in pastel as well. Yes. What is it like to work with pastels? I know you had mentioned when we talked. So fragile. When you were in uh, Brazil that you yeah. really couldn't do any work because of the temperature. Well, it was, it was uh, rainy and sunny. It, it's not always like that, but the time that I was there, it was uh, the rainy season becoming spring. Mm -hmm. So the same way it, it snows in New York. Does it actually affect the pastel? It's, it's a powder. It yeah. Mm -hmm. And God, so if it gets God help humid. you. If it gets wet, mm -hmm. it's done for. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, last summer I was uh, working in pastels and out of the blue, the sun was out and it started to rain. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it, was, ah, it was a nightmare. It really, I, and I do carry, uh, you know, plastic bags or just quick oh, fixes yeah, with that, me, but there's, there's nothing not like an experience to, right. to yeah. prepare you. Right, right. And if some, any kind of dampness gets into <laughs> the plastic bag, it's, there goes the chalkiness you, of you, your pastel. You could, you could uh, essentially uh, damage it. Mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. even worse mm -hmm. with watercolor. Uh, and that work, did we look at that work? I think it was called By Design. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, coming up next. Yeah, if we can yeah, look at that. Yeah, there it is. That's uh -huh. the piece where it started to uh, it started to rain when the sun was out. And it, this is right by, in the center of Central Park by 72nd Street. And there's mm -hmm. just something about the architecture and the space. The, the north side, which faces Bethesda Fountain, really, uh, it gets photographed a great deal. But this mm -hmm. is betwixt and between uh, Bethesda Fountain and the, um, the band shell. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just enjoy, uh, capturing not just the architecture but this kooky kind of well, tree so much in the that background goes on in central park i mean um, i used to live across the street from central park ah, and lucky. just i lived mm -hmm. on central park west and mm -hmm. well sort of like raise uh, our director my son mm -hmm. uh, there and i mean we were constantly going out bike riding and going around the park and i also did a program in central park um, program for children ah. to occupy in the north end of Central Park and but we would explore 
and examine the entire park because part of the program was having bicycles for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I can appreciate uh, the work that you do and how much you enjoy uh, working and doing your, you do have something that's called en plan. Uh, uh, en plein air. That's, that's the French term given mm -hmm. to painters or artists that work well, it's outdoors. With plain... En plein air means in French open air. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're outside in the in the uh, now, you freshness. Now you have to work outside a lot, don't you? Uh, when the weather is uh, 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 cooperative, yeah, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the winter time, I find it somewhat difficult to go out there. I'll try and seek out places where I can be inside and then look out a window, mm -hmm. only because my constitution for the cold is is limited. Uh, the heat, <laughs> but any I've kind of heat of, I can of do. But i your work where you're working outside. In fact, you are in the picture where you have a, a photo of yourself painting outside. Well, those are sometimes just taken by passerbys, and if I see them, I'll ask them if they mm -hmm. can send it to mm -hmm. me. But yeah, there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of candid shots of me working for whatever reason. It's appealing to people as a photo op. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and like I said, luckily some people pass it on. Sometimes they don't, but, uh, and, and at the same time, I, I meet a lot of very interesting people, celebrities, art dealers, uh, other artists. Well, it's, you know, it's always interesting. I mean, it's a part of the um, New York City atmosphere to see people <laughs> on the street painting, mm -hmm. in the park painting, mm -hmm. even in the subway painting. In the subway painting, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and mm -hmm. anytime I see another artist, of course I am curious and do sometimes peek over their shoulder mm -hmm. or try not to bother them, but just just to uh, see what they're doing yeah, and I what mean, you'll resonates even see, with them. See people who are making very interesting paintings of saying, I am homeless, anything helps. Ah, I, ah, I yeah, saw someone that's a like that just a couple of days of, ago mm -hmm. on 8th Avenue. Mm -hmm. He was actually painting, I am homeless, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it was a very nice painting, I'm sure. And, and uh, I guess a more dignified way of uh, communicating with people if he was, mm -hmm too mm -hmm. shy to actually mm -hmm. get that out. Mm -hmm. I think for, for visual artists in particular, there is a certain shyness that comes along with the profession. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not as um, outgoing as uh, people in the, in the field of acting or dancing. Um, so you, you get to do what you love. Well, for you me, it helps. Yourself. It's like an author. Yes, it did As help a writer, with the shyness. You I yourself must yourself on uh, canvas, on paper. Mm -hmm. Co uh, correct. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is sometimes. Um, it's a form of expression. Yes. Being able to let your true self come out without words. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is why you see people texting so much. Maybe. They don't want to communicate, yeah, but, but they, they do, do want to communicate. <laughs> right. This is my <laughs> this is my form of yeah, texting. They have to do it through <laughs> And it takes a longer time. Yeah, right, right, right. Absolutely. Well, now you did some work in uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think we have um, I think we do have a, a picture or a portrait of uh, well, you Well, doing... there's a compilation piece of me working, actually, from this, animals. Uh... Yeah, the, the first piece is me doing a, a portrait of a, a beautiful white horse that happened to be very uh, trained, and, and he just had a psychic sense. This horse was amazing, and I thought, oh I'm going to try this. I'm going to try painting this guy from life. And he, he was very accommodating. Now, again, you see the geometric shape, though, yes. coming into play. Yes. It's there, even though you're in uh, Brazil looking <laughs> at a horse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next, the next one, the, the next image is of uh, a an upside-down triangle, and it is of goats. And they, well, too. Why don't we take, uh, take a look at that next one? And um, Well, the next. The, the next image is the one right do... next to it. Oh, there's you mean three... this grouping. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. three images all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think you have something that you did in um, Italy? Yes, the next uh, image up is of Italy as well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I just want to ask you, you recently were in Brazil. That's where you had yeah, a problem just, with the pastels. The last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. uh, happy that, to say. Yeah. Now, yeah. What okay, is... so this is um, the first image I'm painting in Milano. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the Sforza Castle, the Sforzas were mm -hmm. one of the biggest patrons for Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and it was such a joy to, to be there and to uh, touch and be part of that legacy, the Leonardo legacy. I mean, he lived there for a number of years. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and again, uh, The Last Supper was in walking distance. Mm -hmm. In fact, I found out when I went there that there is a tunnel that goes from the castle to the church where mm. The Last Supper is Santa Maria della Grazia. Mm -hmm. The middle piece is me painting in Venice, mm -hmm. and the last image is me uh, uh, talking at the uh, Italian American Museum where I Are had my show. Are you in uh, Italian? Um, domenticato molto. Purtroppo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is wonderful. Well, what an interesting experience it has been to look at your work Thank and you. to to learn of what inspires you and how you like to to create. Well, I appreciate your interest and and the fact that you picked up on the geometric shapes because that is part of my. Uh, my work, mm -hmm. my work's character, as well as my own personal uh, uh, Well, it has been a passion. real delight um, to have you back on the show. Because Thank you've you. done I'm, so much. I'm very since pleased you, to be here. Since, oh, it's wonderful. Since you were last here, and um, it's just really uh, a pleasure to see how much even that you've grown. <laughs> Thank with, you. with your work. So I want to say uh, thank you for being here, and I'd also like to say thank you to our crew, and thank you to Ed, um, our director. Yes, indeed. Who, <laughs> <laughs> and, and a very, Rich. very, very special thanks to Rich and Manhattan Neighborhood Network for making this show possible. You've been watching Minding Your Business, the show for, as I said, really interesting and talented Entrepreneurs. I appreciate that. Thank and you. And it's just a pleasure. See yourself where you want to be. And Anna Marie, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you much. Thank You've you. You've just really been mm -hmm. delightful, wonderful. Thank You're you. You're talented, and I know that we're going to be hearing more. Do you have another exhibit planned? Uh, possibly planned uh, in Brazil. And it, it's. Because you just did one uh, a couple of months or a month ago. Uh, I did an exhibition in New York mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly you are motivational in somebody else who aspires to get into the profession 